doesn't mean anything in any, in any language. So okay, so it's some one minute. Yes. Okay. Too, so. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Let's start the webinar. Okay. Let's let's start the webinar. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I wanted to change a lot of things things in my presentation. I and I didn't. But okay. Let's let's live. So let's let's start. So how do I how do I make this? Okay. So I I'll start it and we will cut it somewhere here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So make make so. it a few seconds silent and it will be the spot to to be cut. Already it. in it. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Luboš Prikl from CFD Support and I would like to welcome you to the webinar where we would like to show you uh, an example of centrifugal fan workflow where we would like to show you how easy it is to set up or create a CFD simulation, FEA simulation, FSI and also a little bit of optimization workflow in our simulation environment TCAE. So welcome everyone. Uh, first, some technical uh, points. So the webinar is being recorded. So the recording will be surely will be later publicly available on our YouTube channel because there are always a lot of questions whether there will be a recording. So yes, there will be a recording. So yep. Uh, in the in the first part, I will I will make some necessities and show uh, some some general information about what's on the table. Uh, I'll be nice. Don't worry. It, it will it will be only what's necessary. And after after me, Radek Radek will will show some yeah technical aspects and show show his the, the hands on experience uh, in in the software how to how to set things uh, what's what's the way of thinking uh, when when we do this analysis and simulations. And in the last part, there will be a Q and A session dedicated to, to your questions and our answers. So feel free to ask your questions, and we will happily answer them the good news is all the questions will be answered uh, the, the most representative questions will be answered right away in the webinar and some specific questions uh, that, which need also some some research or check uh, from us we will we will answer them uh, later via email but you can be sure that we will answer everything so uh, take use this opportunity uh, and uh, uh, use use this chance and and ask your questions. We'll be happy to to get uh, in touch with you and answer everything. And we'll be as transparent as possible to give you all the all the information you need. Uh, yes. So it's this. I guess we are uh, on the way. Uh, together with me on the line is Radek Matza, my colleague and our head engineer and also developer and also great colleague, husband, and father, and motorbike rider, and everything. Radek, hello. Can we get in touch? Hello, hello, Lubosh, and hello, the audience. Yeah. What to say more? <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I think, I think uh, it's great to have you here, Radek. Uh, I think everything is set up uh, yeah. perfectly, so I, I guess we can, we can uh, go ahead. Okay, so I'll start with, with, uh, with some general introductions, so mm -hmm. uh, I'll I'll start with the CFD support. This is, is the name of our company. We deal with CFD, FEA, FSI optimization, and acoustics services. Uh, but surprise, surprise! Uh, our flagship product is a comprehensive software simulation environment a software for for simulations. So we we have been working on it. 10 years uh, from uh, for, for last 10 years so it's been uh, a lot of effort has been spent a lot of work has been uh, has been done and a lot of really a lot of issues has been resolved to have this so we are we are happy to to show you show you show you our product it's it's based on open source it's uh, it it's actually merged the benefits of open source and and the commercial codes so i i guess most of you you know it already, but still I will just quickly mention that uh, TCAE is software where we have merged the benefits of open source. Uh, it, that, that means the source code is available. All the methods are as transparent as possible. It's basically yeah, the open form is inside, uh, and and the new solvers, new libraries, new function objects, um, a lot of uh, enhancements towards especially turbo machinery, but it's for general uh, simulations, especially uh, yeah turbo machinery and uh, 
external aerodynamics and the, the, the merged with benefits of commercial codes where that means it's professional uh, solution which which is the, the uh, that there are guarantees that, that it works we have great technical support we have um, yeah uh, conceptual uh, development uh, in time there is a roadmap and uh, there, there are guarantees it's it works and our 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 knowledge is available to to be transferred with the software so it's not just a software it's not just a piece of of, of code it's it's really a whole concept which 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 uh, generates a lot of uh, a huge amount of of uh, edit value on on the side of 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 the, of the users okay uh, so it Lugos, consists maybe, sorry for interrupting yeah. maybe we can yeah. switch off our cameras just yes yeah. no exactly yeah. yes 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 so yeah 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 bye bye uh, yeah 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 we'll, maybe we'll come back back later if if we yeah. Uh, yeah yeah remember it yes yeah absolutely yeah 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 thank you Radek, for 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 your notice okay so yep yeah. uh, TCAE consists of uh, it consists of uh, software modules. That means there are individual modu modules like standalone pieces of software and the users can play with them and plug them uh, and, and switch them on and off. And uh, also it's possible to input uh, other codes. Uh, TCA is, is extremely flexible in these terms and everyone can create his or her workflow that fits his or her needs skills experience resources etc etc so uh, there are a couple of principles i'd like to share with you that that we that we follow with tcae so the first of them is tcae is extremely flexible so you can you can really uh, create or get it created uh, from us uh, uh, you, you can create your own workflow where, where you plug in all all the all the pieces of of software you need so you can you can combine tcae with commercial commercial codes with in-house codes with open source with other scripts tca can be scripted or or it can run other scripts so it's extremely flexible and it's really uh, for this reason it's extremely usable and it, it certainly delivers a lot of uh, edit value uh, there are no limitations on number of users there are no limitations on the number of, of sessions or cores or jobs. There are no limitations on number of installations. So TCAE is absolutely ready to deliver the, a lot of amount of scalability. It can scale your resources um, to the fullest, a big benefit. Uh, it's accurate. It's not a general purpose code. It, it's a code especially developed for turbo machinery applications and external aerodynamics. There are also some specific uh, applications for, for heat transfer, for example, but, but these two are the most significant. So turbo machinery and external aero. And it, it definitely fits your, your skills, your, your custom experience, patience, dedication, and, and everything what, what you, uh, what you uh, what you have uh, it's perfectly automated so it uh, once you set up the workflow it can be run again and again and deliver the results and it can feed uh, your databases it can be reused to generate a lot of uh, accurate data so it can be used both as a black box or total high-end fully sophisticated, fully sophisticated uh, uh, simulation code where where all the options are open, transparent, and and the user can change them and and play with them, and it's the always the decision of the user. Yeah, a lot of benchmarks have been done. Some of them are public, so definitely we are ready to to deliver the comparisons. So there are no doubts about uh, the accuracy, uh, about the speed of convergence, convergence. I'm sorry, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and. Uh, the way of using TCAE is also very straightforward. It can be used on whatever uh, resource you have available. So it can be used on laptop. You can be used on a PC, cluster cloud. You can use it uh, like remotely from home, uh, from the office. Uh, you can use it in Windows or in Linux. The workflow is extremely consistent everywhere. So you can be sure you, you would use uh, all your resources. Yeah, it's based on open source. It's very important. Uh, notice it's uh, one of our, let's say, biggest added value to 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 it. 
Uh, so it's completely based on open source. So there are more than 60 open source projects in it. And uh, on top of that, we have added more than 40 men years of development in a team of, of focused development to, to make everything happen and made, made the, the graphical interface, etc. So uh, a lot of work has been done and that's, that's, the, that's the value which is, which is de delivered. Also the, the value of TCA is extremely perpetual because it allows you to, to own the solution. It allows you to keep the solution for yourself, for your company, keep the knowledge under the roof and the, your most valuable asset, which is, your, which, which is your knowledge and skills, to keep it and own it. That's, that's why we are being picked. Uh, because TCAE is a tool which uh, allows you to keep the solution and, and own it and definitely uh, keep the knowledge yeah, under the roof, which is a which is big asset. Okay, uh, there are a couple of developments uh, we are going uh, through at the moment. The, I'm not sure if I was, if I wanted to talk about this at, uh, in this webinar, but I will, okay, uh, very quickly. All of us have seen what what development has been done in, in the last period uh, about machine learning and AI and everything. We, we believe that, that it's really happening. Uh, AI is taking field by field by field in technology and definitely the simulations and in engineering simulations and virtual prototyping is the, is, is the next, um, uh, in the row and it, it's definitely taking the field as well. So we are developing now a new a new module which which will be a called T base and it will be it will be ready for for operating the data and uh, and uh, yeah do do a lot of stuff in in terms of of rapid design in in seconds not not just in hours or days. Uh, but I guess we'll talk about this. Uh, more later when it will be coming. I believe that the first version will be released uh, this uh, September, October. So we have something uh, we can look forward to. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not gonna talk too much about the optimization. It's extremely important. It's a great shift from trial and error methods to conceptual search for the best possible, but I'm not going to talk about it uh, anymore because I think it's time to switch the speaker and uh, I will I will hand over the presentation to Radek, and we are looking forward to his uh, to his contribution. So what's what's mm -hmm. he, okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm doing it right now. So Radek, the stage is yours. We can see the screen, so you can go ahead. Thank you, Lubos. Thank you. So hello again. Hello again, and I will directly jump into the into my part and I will show you practically how to work with PCA and as was suggested, the today's case will be about the centrifugal pump. So again, we will be working with a case you can freely download on our webpage as an example of the centrifugal fan with all the details about the case, about the setup and you can you can download the case and try on your site after after you 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 download the trial version of TCE. Yeah. So today we will be speaking about about this case, and I will directly go to that. I have here two examples. So first one is is uh, is the case presented on, presented on our web pages, which is set up for the CFD simulation and FEA simulation. So this is the example of CFD and FEA simulation where the FEA part includes the FSI mapping, one way, one way coupling from the CFD simulation, the forces are taken and mapped on the, on the solid part, and then FEA analysis is made on that solid part. So I will directly open open the case, which I have already simulated before. So we will you will also see the results directly, and we will go through the whole workflow. And I will I will present the step by, not not step by step, but let's say the general general topics and general steps to 
to do to successfully set up the whole the whole workflow and the next part will be about the t-opt where we taken an example based on cf turbo but for for the parametric model you can use any any software you want and i will show an example how to how to connect centrifugal pump pump with with the t-opt module and run some optimization study all right so so this is this is the case this is the environment of tcae the graphical user interface implemented in paraview and everything you can manage from the gui or for advanced users or when you would like to run just series of preset simulations you can also run it from from a batch mode in windows or in in linux, in linux from the command line and everything can be run without a gui okay so let's present the today's case so here in the in the pipeline browser you can see each activated module so here we have we have the tmesh we have the tcfd and tfea in the first item which which is the manager of everything where you can manage each part of the workflow like saving the project running the meshing running the cfd simulation or <coughs> fea simulation and activate each module to work with so usually the starting point is the tmesh module for which you need to have ready geometry to be meshed within the tmesh module or you need to have an external external mesh already discretized and ready for the cfd simulation in in uh, for example fluent mesh format cgns format or uh, or open form format this example works with stls so in general what you need to have as input is the stl geometry of your flow domain split it into the meaningful components because uh, image workflow and the whole TCA workflow uh, works with components it means that the, the whole domain is split it into the regions which is called components uh, typically describing the each part of the of the turbo machinery design typically for example inlet pipe uh, impeller because then on the impeller we would like to define a specific physics like rotation and and the volute and for example some extension so this case consists of four components so here in the cfd mesh mesh setup we have four components for each component we have loaded the stls and basically here for each part of the of the design we assign type of the boundaries like what is the inlet what is the outlet what are the walls or for turbo machine there is turbo machinery designs we can set what is the blade hub shroud for better reference later on yeah the, the machine just quickly the machine is done using the snappy x mesh which works from the initial mesh typically a hexahedral shape of of the boxes which is split it into the into the core or zero level size of the of the cell which is which can be set here as a background mesh cell size then you just set the point internal point it's called to distinguish which part of the of the component should be should be meshed from inside or from outside typically so from inf, uh, internal flow you definitely need to go with the inside part of the component and and then for each part of the geometry which is split it typically for the inlet outlet and the walls uh, we distinguish between the inlet and inlet outlet interface so interfaces are the patches which connects neighboring component so typically here and this case is uh, this case uh, also includes the secondary flow path so includes the, the let's say the whole real domain of the of the pump so we can we can show it in the way that 
let's say I can make a slice, a marginal slice, so I can apply a slice on, on the CFD geometry. So the surface will be perpendicular to the to the X, and I would like to make a slice in the origin. So show plane. And now here in the pipeline browser, I can, for example, get rid of the CFD geometry. I can also get rid of the FEA geometry. And this is our marginal slice depicting each region. So here we have three visible region, and the fourth is just the external pipe or the extent of the outlet. And what we can see that the current topology used is uh, divided in this way, that we have the inlet piping, then we have the impeller itself without the secondary flow path. And the secondary flow path, I don't know if it's visible, so I can here set the line thickness to be more visible. And the secondary flow path is part of the of the volute itself. Yeah, so we have interface here, interface from the volute part to the impeller, and the interface from the impeller to the volute part. So if you look here, for example, component two, which is the impeller. So we have some part like blade, hub shroud, and inlet and outlet interface. So by right right click. You, you are connecting the interfaces with the neighboring component in the standard way, as presented in many previous webinars. And just to see the topology of the connection, you can here open the component ma map. By double click, you can extend it, undock from it. So the flow goes in this way. So you can see that from the inlet, the inlet is connected to the volute part of this interface. Then then through the uh, through the impeller, let's say outlet. So this part uh, or impeller inlet, which is this green section, is connected to the impeller, and the outlet of the impeller is connected back to the to the volute part, and then the volute part is connected to the to the volute extension as yeah, the piping at the outlet of the volute. So this this is the way one of the option how we can how we can create the topology of of the uh, component with with secondary flow path what is important typically there are two um, two possibilities how to create the topology one way is to uh, include or exclude the <laughs> secondary flow path from the rotation rotational part or you can also include it depending on the source of the of the data and what is what is easy Easier to be to be managed and uh, for, for for example exported from your CAD CAD design. And what is what um, TCFD allows is that we can we can basically set set what which region is rotating like like is like it is set here. So if I go up, so here the reference frame mean if the whole component is rotating, typically for the rotors. And the other part is static, but within the static part, we can we can define a, rotate, a rotating patch. It has one limitation that this patch need to have the rotational symmetry. Otherwise, if there are any unsymmetrical part on the rotating part, then this part must be included into the rotating component. Yeah, so then this must be redesigned if there are some unsymmetric screws or some kind of uh, curves which are which uh, destroy the rotational symmetry then for example new interface or the interfaces must be redesigned and put somewhere into the volute and the whole part then needs to be included into the rotating part but this is not the case all these uh, outside part outside part of the of the of the rotor of the impel are uh, rotational symmetrical so then it can be set in this way. Yeah, so this is the preset or preparation part for the for the meshing, and when everything is perfect, then you can run the meshing. So you can click on mesh all or run all when when, when everything is preset, and then after each part is meshed, you can visualize them. So for example, you can click here on the impeller part. 
and now we can see yeah the generated mesh directly in the in the render view up under the item CFD mesh. So if you click it, then you can, for example, visualize the topology. So if I click here, surface with edges, then we see the topology and you can check any part of the mesh or any part of the component you want to, you want to see and you want to check. So this is the first part, the meshing part. So this usually requires, if you start from very beginning, several iteration to to get experience with the with the topology, with the with the boundaries, and basically with the proper mesh parameters. So typically, you should start with some coarse mesh, which perfectly describes all the parts, and then you can start refining it and, for example, following or seeing the influence on the re accuracy results or, or accuracy of the results and to do some convergence study on the mesh, for example, if you if you want. So this is the meshing and then we can move to the TCFD part. So when the mesh is done, then we can preset the CFD simulation. Here, I think we have described the setup many times. So for the pump, we have a special simulation time or type of the simulation for pumps. In the physics, in the time management, here we can manage how many boundary conditions or how many con conditions of the pump we would like to simulate. So here we have seven points. In the steady state mode, we set the maximum number of iterations. In the fluid properties, we set the property of water, of the fluid in general, but here for of, of water. In the multi-physics, we can, for example, for the pump, we can enable the cavitation risk, which is just, let's say, the post-processing of the results and show you possible cells, which has pressure less than water vapor pressure. And this just shows you where cavitation can occur based just on the post-processing. It's not the new physics, it's not the model, it's just the post-processing of steady state results. Here you can play with the turbulence model. Here you basically set uh, the rotating speed. It follows the right hand rule where the thumb points uh, the axis of rotation and the fingers shows the positive direction of the rotation. Then in the sim simulation solver, here you can set as many number of processors you have. We always, for the best performance, just use the physical cores. Numerical order second for the pumps, typically it, it works well with the second one. If there are some problems, you can go for the first, but then the accuracy will be a little, little bit lower. Runtime evaluated quantities. Here you set what quantities you would like to see during the simulation or at the end of the simulation. Typically, you can write the average quantities because over the time, over the iteration time, uh, the, the solution is averaged to get rid of all the possible oscillations and unwanted unwanted yeah oscillation or peaks in the solutions in the solution in the efficiency probe you set from which part you would like to evaluate torque uh, inlet pressure outlet pressure so basically you just pick the components you would like to uh, include into the torque evaluation and what is the inlet and outlet of the domain you can set as many efficiency probes. For example, if you would like to see just the performance on the impeller itself, like like the efficiency, which is evaluated from the head on the impeller itself, for example, you can create a new one and set the inlet patch as the inlet into the rotor and outlet patch as an outlet from the rotor. Then you can add some additional evaluation like forces on a particular part or probes. It, mean the, it means the point within the flow domain and which uh, quantity would like to follow, for example, pressure or velocity in the exact point within the flow domain. Convergence check. So if you would like to speed up the simulation so you don't want to wait for the maximum iteration, you can set your convergence cr criteria. For example, here, if the average efficiency is less than 0 0.1, 
then the simulation is stopped before the maximum iterations are reached. So we can add as many convergence checks you want. So typically, what is your uh, um, what is your main quantity to follow? So based on that quantity, you can usually set this criteria. In the controls, this is, these are the, some advanced controls for the numerical solution, like under relaxation factors, some kind of bounding, so minimum maximum pressure and velocity, and and equation solver settings like linear solver tolerances, absolute absolute and relative. But there is usually no need to adjust these values because because they are set to some robust robust. Uh, robust ranges and the main the most important part most important part from the simulation point of view is setting the boundary conditions so at the inlet at the outlet you have many options to be set like pressures total pressures uh, flow rate volumetric and or mass flow rate fixed velocity some some specific specific uh, Boundary conditions for some specific un turbo machine or turbo machine or even external flow cases. So here we have the volumetric flow rate at the inlet. So we have seven points we set to reveal the efficiency map under the working working um, conditions or under the conditions we would like to see the performance of the pump. Um, uh, here we have turbulence quantities at the inlet. At the outlet, because we are working in incompressible mode, we can set a reference pressure to zero because the solver works with so-called kinematic pressure. So there is uh, <clears throat> the solution is independent on the on the density because density is constant. On the walls, we can set slip or no slip boundary conditions. So for walls with friction, we we setting the slip, no slip, sorry, and for some extension or virtual walls we can set slip slip boundary conditions st standard wall functions or low reynolds if the mesh is uh, resolved and near the, the resulting y plus parameter is near near zero uh, near the value one interface conditions for the full wheel geometry typically we set arbitrary mesh interface like frozen rotor in the CF, CFX language, or if we have a segment or for some specific purposes, we can enable the mixing plane approach, which averages the solution over, over the interface. Initial condition is just to set some reasonable value to start the solver from these values. And finally, about the post-processing, so here we can we can add some user preferences to see in the report typically the quantities <clears throat> or the section in the in the report and for example in this case we have some previous results or uh, results of some uh, modified cases so you can input the csv file and tell which data should be visualized in which graph yeah so you can directly see some comparisons in the final final report. You can also add um, an automatic autom automatic evaluated visualization like blade to blade view and the manual average. I will show you later in the report. And finally, in the miscellaneous menu, you can, for example, tell I would like to have the result in CGNS format to be, for example, imported into the into some program you want to. And write surface quantities typically for FSI coupling. So I would like to write the forces which I get from the CFD simulation, and then you, you can see later that this can be imported in 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 the FEA module. So this is TCFD, and when this is done, again we can go to the TCFD run part and run everything everything by one click and see what 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 will happen basically at the end of the simulation maybe i will you will see the report like this so tcfd report 
which you can see in this HTML view. And this CFD report shows you the statistics about the simulation, like what what has been said and some mesh mesh statistics. For for example, values about the Y plus from which you can decide if the the wall treatment was well defined. Overall simulation time, how many processors were used for the simulation, some physical properties of the simulation, and then you have each section you have chosen here in the in the in this report part. So then you will see in the report. So here we have, for example, head. So for each flow rate, we have the head value, we have the graph of the head versus the flow rate and also you can check the convergence so if basically if the values or the graph at the end of each point is almost constant then it will show you okay the simulation runs well and the the the, the particle quantity converges or converged here we have the efficiency and because we added here some additional data file so we can see directly the comparison so I think the red one is the pump without leakage. Yeah, so without, without the secondary flow path. Here, here, here is our current simulation in the blue color. And the green one is an example of, of the same simulation with a with little bit more resolved by inflation layer. Yeah, so this is, it should be more accurate result comparing with so this is the mesh without inflation layer and this is the green is the results with inflation layer yeah, so for example for this kind of uh, uh, study uh, convergent on mesh or something like that you can directly see the differences between the simulations again the conver convergence graph of the efficiency and then we have several sections like torque axial force radial force acting on the on the impeller total pressure difference for the so total pressure difference at the inlet at, and at the outlet total pressure per interfaces so you can see how what is the vol value of the pressure at the outlet from the impeller for example for each point for each flow rate and the conver convergence of, of that value so you can really analyze analyze your simulation very very deep and maybe a yeah, velocity magnitude and maybe just to skip all the other parts and go for the automated uh, visualization tool tools like blade to blade view so typically this is the blade to blade view uh, with a surface streamline visualization so you can see the visualization on the blade to blade view span means that this is the relative coordinate between the hub and shroud and for example you can follow any recirculation area or, or whatever how the flow topology is changing for the different flow rates for example and the marginal average the same like this so the circumferentially average solution of here of the static pressure the, uh, the, and this is the relative pressure okay so this is the so for each point for each cfd simulation we have this extensive or extended report in which you can find all the important important uh, information and then if the cfd runs well we can enable the tfea module and first because we would like to simulate fea we need to have this the mesh on which we will simulate it and within the within the t mesh setup we have here the mesh output set to cfd and fea so it means we have here also the fea part and the setup is much much more simpler than for the for meshing cfd cfd mesh so here we have just the input of of a geometry in stl format which describes the whole domain of the solid so <clears throat> this is the, basically one stl describing or defining the solid of the impeller and here we have just uh, we, you can use several engines 
or two engines at the moment, NetGen or GMesh. For the NetGen, you have basically two parameters, minimum and maximum size of the tetrahedra in it, and some other parameters of the algorithm. It is standard NetGen algorithm, so you can play with the standard standard parameters relevant for the NetGen algorithm. Then you basically generate the mesh. So if you go here, here is the FEA mesh. So you will build it. Again, you can done it automatically, everything. And when the mesh is done, you can visualize it directly in the in the render view. So now the mesh is loading, and when the mesh is loaded, I will get so this is the input STL, so I get get rid of it and not CFD mesh. This is the FEA mesh. And again, you can watch uh, not surface LIC, but surface with edges. Yeah, so the topology of the net tetrahedra, tetrahedra mesh for the FEA analysis. And when this is done, then you can go for the TFEA simula simulation for the TFEA module. So let me quickly again go through the setup. Here we have the simulation and in FEA analysis, here you set which physics you would like to simulate. So here we have just fluid structure interaction. Source for FSI mapping is TCFD results or you can, you can also use some external data. Here from which patches the data are mapped. You, you can also uh, check for the deformation without the rotation or including the rotation. You would like to map the forces. And here you, for example, if the surface is not totally wetted, then you, you would like to use the relative pressure just to yeah, mimic the real pressure from also those parts which are not wetted. Typically, it could be some atmospheric pressure. And here we would like to use the average quantities, not the not the instant one typically, because the average are usually the more best converge we we want to use for mapping. For the model analysis, you can or you can activate the model analysis. Tell if you would like to do the model analysis uh, just on the solid or with the boundary condition applied. It means with the map forces on it and how many eigenfrequencies you would like to reveal. So here it is five, some, and again, some um, parameters for the solver, FEA solver. So number of processors again, linear algebra, finite element order. For large deformation, you can apply, use uh, the nonlinear equations. Material, so just material from which the solid is composed and the boundary conditions. So typically for rotation, you would like to uh, somehow uh, fix the, the parts which are which are fixed to the shaft basically. So you can use some uh, artificial artificial shape like in cylinder here, or you can also uh, input some STL file or CSV file with the points which are fixed. So many options are here. For heat, um, for his simulation of the heat or including the heat, we, you can add fixed temperature regions and you can also add loading regions some uh, with, with the predefined data. And again, in the post-processing, uh, in the report, you can see the, your preferable units and some additional uh, extract surface data. So if you would like to extract the results from the from the TFEA, typically for the for the temperatures, because then they can be put back into the CFD as a new boundary conditions. And when the TFEA, TFEA is done, you can see the TFEA report. Let's go to the top. So similar, similar HTML report or the similar format, but now focus on the FEA analysis. So here we have again some general settings. 
material description which was set for the simulation, solver parameters, mesh statistics, and now for each point, so because we have seven points simulated, so seven, seven different boundary conditions for CFD, and because we are using FSI mapping, so now we will have seven different uh, results for the FEA, each for the different forces getting from <laughs> getting from the CFD simulation. So let's go th through the first point. So we, here we, we here we have the static analysis. We can have a nice rendering of the displacement magnitude and Ponmis stresses. So we can directly see how the magnitude of the deformation and magnitude magnitude of Ponmis stresses. Everything is again tabulated. So for example, you have the maximal and minimal minimal values and the node in which and coordinate of the of the cell or element in which the maximum and minimum uh, values were uh, were occurred uh, occurred yeah <laughs> then we have frequency analysis so we, here we have the five frequencies which solver found typically you watch for the first symmetrical one let's say so the first frequency which are important is the is this one so 800 hertz and you also see the deformation for for this particular frequency and of course for all the others all first five which solver found basically then we have some statistic about this participation factor effective model mass total effective mass and the same report for the second point third point etc etc after the simulation done the similar as a, the tcfd you can you can show the cfd results so directly after the simulation or even during the simulation you can watch what what is happening so for all the, all the currently finished points you can you can you can visualize the results but now everything is finished so we can load the cfd results and also i can do directly i can also show the fea results into one render render view and then you can you can play with the, with the visualization so there are there are many options how to visualize the results so you can you can do slice from the CFD simulation. You can visualize, I don't know, for, for, for example, the velocity, relative velocity with LIC's filter. And together for the FEA analysis, you can visualize the displacement, for example. And yeah, basically you can play as you want and adjust your visualizations for for your report or for the deep analysis. Okay, I think I think I, I I can conclude here for this for this part and just quickly, if everything is preset so and you are very satisfied with the results, you are confident what you have set and everything looks great. So then this is the point when you can go for the for the optimization for the optimization just quickly you need some parametric software so here we have a cf turbo for example which gives nice parametric models and the export of the of the geometry is very nice and here basically is the project here we have the geometry exported for a similar similar pipe and only what we need is to create some connection. So typically we will help our users to create such a script which connects the TCFD or <clears throat> TCAE and TOPT particularly with the external program. And then I think then you enable this TOPT module, yeah, which is here. You enable TOPT module and here you set what you want. So this is just a simple, simple uh, example. 
just running DOE, but you can also run the optimization with, with internal algorithm, which looks for the for the best solution depending on your uh, objective function. But let's say here we have just set DOE, we load the parametric model from the CF Turbo, and we would like to see the results for the particular setup uh, and the parameter and the optimization or DOE parameter is just the number of blades. So we would like to see the results of, of the pump performance for five, six, seven, up to 11 blades. So this is the optimization parameters. Here we have the track quantities like, so we would like to follow efficiency, head, power and, and torque. Then we run the simulation and at the end of the simulation of the optimization, here, based on DOE, we will see this TOPT report, which again shows you statistic about your parametric space. So here we have our parameter, parameter is number of blades, and here we have the efficiency, head power, and torque for each optimization loop. So for each uh, parameter of number of blades, then we have graphs. So efficiency versus the runs. So how efficiency revealed during the optimization, but for the track quantities, we can compare, for example, number of blade with respect to the efficiency. So now, for example, we can read that the best efficiency is, is gained for seven blades. Similarly, you can, you can see the head uh, with respect to the number of blades. So what we, I think what we would expect that more blades generates Higher, uh, higher head and also higher power and higher torque, of course. And yeah, if you preset more parameters like thickness of the blade or angle of the blade, so then you have really have nice parametric model and go for the best optimization or best efficiency, efficiency or the optimal head or whatever you want to achieve. All right, so I think there are seven minutes left to the 3 p.m. So I think it's time to go back to Lubosch to conclude and to have some time to answer your questions. So Lubosch, I think you can take the presentation back and finish the webinar. Okay, Radek, thank you very much. It was great as usual, so thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I liked it. And uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead in the in the webinar. So now I would like to ask the audience to ask your questions. It's it's time to ask about anything. We will we'll do our best. We we still have some time, and and let's let's talk about it. It's now now it's a great time to 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 talk. And uh, yeah, so let's let's see what what we have here. So, 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 I already see some, a couple of questions. So let's, let's take a look. Uh, yes, so Alkan is asking, uh, uh, is it possible to define under TCAE the variant parameter and the variant is produced by CF Turbo through the script? Is it right uh, what I understood? Uh, yes, so re regarding the, the optimization you you can define define any parameter that, that comes to your mind so uh, it can be uh, anything from any parameter from from cfd meshing uh, or all the all the setups and numer numerical schemes or of course uh, or the, the the shape so it, it can be yeah like like as, as radek mentioned it can be cf turbo parameter or it can be anything else external which you are able to connect to the objective function and also which you can vary and depend depending on that the the, the input data for for the simulation changes that that the parameter is so so th there is absolutely free free hands with there are free hands with absolutely free hands with uh, with the with the parameters uh, so it's it's this uh, uh, um Heiko, uh, our our friend Heiko is asking, uh, is the option still available to update via terminal? Uh, well, <laughs> good question. It, theoretically, yes. Uh, uh, 
but these these software update if 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 the, if this is the, the update means the software update the, to to newer version uh, inside the version it should be possible but honestly we, we didn't we didn't push this this uh, capability very much uh, in, the, in the last period so so let's see but it should be possible but let's uh, let, well, let's discuss this uh, uh, separately. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 a thing. This is a thing. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, Radek. Also, uh, if you see uh, a question mm -hmm. you would like to answer, we feel free. Have uh, in, one in the... question from Alkan: yes. Is it possible to define the different regions for inlet interfaces and outlet of each component for any CAT file, or should it be exported from CAT? Yeah, so, so if you would like to change the topology of the of the input data, so for example, I redesign the interfaces and so on, so this must be directly done in the CAT. Yeah, so what what this DMesh gets in the STL format, it's the fixed data which for which the boundary conditions and the whole mesh setup is done. Yeah, so if you need to change something, you need to regenerate it in the original or original source, so usually in the in your CAD format. So to create the interface somewhere else, export STLs and put it put it into the into the T mesh. Yeah, so the topological changes of the of the geometry must be done externally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the third question from Alkan is: uh, Could uh, you please explain the the inflation rate, uh, where we uh, get more precise results out of the CV simulation? Uh, yeah. So whether the question is meaning uh, if, if in the inflation layer of of of, of the mesh, uh, what's the what's the what's the end uh, of, of the the rate of increasing? So that's that's a parameter you can you can change all the time. And uh, we, normally it's like up to 1.2. And uh, if the inflation rate, in in this case, if 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 you mean uh, something else, yeah, uh, please uh, send us an email. But, but but this is how I understand the question. Inflation uh, inflation rate is is yeah uh, the quotient of the of the of the increasing cells in the in the inflation layer. Uh, yeah, and uh, Aravind is asking how to get the software. Uh, just uh, just uh, request the, the trial version or send us uh, an email to info at CFD support comment. We will provide uh, all the information about about the process. What what are the options for? Uh, there are a lot of options for for everyone. So feel free to contact us. There 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 is always a way to 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 use the software. Okay, I think this could be it. This could be it. I don't see uh, any any relevant question uh, here in the pool. So yeah, the time has come. So I will I will I will skip. So let's let's skip this. Radek, do we show mm -hmm. ourselves once once again? Maybe, yeah, we can. <laughs> are we are we there? Yes, I can I can see some some people who remember who remember <laughs> me. Uh, yeah familiar faces so yeah this this would be it are we still sharing the screen because i don't i am lost i got lost i think yeah, because we uh, i still see uh, the presentation okay. yeah okay so okay I'll, I'll, anyway I'll, I'll finish in my presentation mm -hmm. hopefully you can you can see see my screen yeah. uh but this is really a, a conclusion here's uh, as usual a couple of those who already share our visions with us and uh yeah we should update this slide because it's a little bit outdated and uh yep so this would be really it so radek would you say hello thank you for watching Bye. and we will be glad if you contact us for any question or any discussion further discussion so yeah thank you for watching and let's stay in contact yeah absolutely yeah yeah this this is it for today but not for all the time feel free to get in touch uh, it's our it's for us it's uh it's our job to help and we do it uh, with with happiness so let us know what we can do for you we'll, we'll, we will certainly do and this will be it for today so thank you for now and bye bye yeah bye bye have a nice bye -bye. day bye bye, bye.